Hi, now we are going to start second part of the chapter India Geographical Feature. We have already discussed first part in which we dealt with location, extent and introduction and political division of India into states, union territories and districts. Now we are going to study the second part of the chapter India Geographical Feature. We have already uploaded the chapters Asia Climate and India Climate. So you can refer the geography playlist. So let's get started. So physiological physiographic divisions of India. So India along with its neighboring countries. What are its neighboring countries? China, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka is known as Indian subcontinent. So this page itself is known as the Indian subcontinent. And the India is separated from this subcontinent. How is it separated? So the Himalayas separates India from China and the mountain ranges, the desert separated from Pakistan and water bodies separated from Sri Lanka. So in this way, India is become isolated from rest of the Asian countries by Yangfold Mountains of Himalayas and uh, Asian walls. So Himalayas is act acting like a wall of Asia. Now, we are going to study the five physiographic divisions of India. What are the five physiographic divisions? Uh, you, you need to remember these in order. Himalayas, Northern Plains, Peninsula Plateau, Coastal Regions and Islands. So, we are going to discuss Himalayas in detail. So, Himalayas. So, Himalayas is known as Northern Mountains because it is present in the north side of the Indian subcontinent. So, Himalayas include Permian Knot. So, what is Permian Knot? We have already discussed Permian Knot in the chapter Asia, the largest continent. But still, I am going to revise. So, Permian Knot is in northern side of India. Topmost of India, there is a Permian Knot. And from this Permian Knot, Various mountain ranges arises. So like Tinshan, Kunlun, Karakoram, right? So these are the mountain ranges which originate from the knot. That is Permian knot. So Permian knot also comes under the category of northern mountains. And Himalayas are further subdivided into three parts. Northwest range, northern Himalayas and Purvanchal. Northwest Range. Northwest Range includes mountain ranges radiating from Pamir Knot. So from Pamir Knot, what are the mountain ranges which are coming? So those are included in Northwest Ranges. It includes Indukush, Kunlun, Karakoram and Ladakh. Next is Northern Himalayas. Northern Himalayas starts from Kashmir and runs to up to Assam. In Kashmir, it starts from Naga Parbat and in Assam, it ends in Namcha Parva. So, and then, and in Northern Himalayas, it includes Imadri, Lesser Himalayas and Shivalik ranges. You need to remember the ills, same with here, right? Now, Purvanchal. Purvanchal include those Himalayan ranges which pass through the states of Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, Nagaland, so, mountain ranges include Patkaipum, Naga Hills, Mizo Hills, Garo Kashi Jaintya Hills. I am going to show this Garo Kashi Jaintya because uh, you need to, this is helpful in further studies. So, if you see the easternmost part of the India, so you can see the three hills, Garo, Kashi, Jaintya, arranged one after the other successively. So, these are the hills uh, which are the most important in capturing uh, the rain and giving heavy rainfall to Meghala, Meghalaya right so this is Karakoram this is also important these are Himalayas right it starts from Kashmir ends in Assam in Kashmir where does it start Naga Parvat and ends in Assam where does it end particular places Namcha Parva and the rest of the divisions of India divisions of Himalayas you just remember the mountain ranges no need to just locate in the India right so the same has been given here also you can just go through it or just take a look of this so next we are going to study about northern plains so the plains which are in north side of india are known as northern plains 
so it includes those plains which comes under himalayas from himalayas to the peninsula plateau so a localized peninsula plateau so except this what are the plains which comes above the india north side of india as well as northern plains which includes tar desert indus ganga haryana plain this is and ganga plain the same in the area of river ganga and brahmaputra plain so these are the plains of india so just refer this so as i said that northern plains include this four ranges and uh, indian sector account alo alone accounts for 2400 km of the northern plains and we are going to study detailed about tar desert it's a sandy desert in southwest india and eastern peninsula this plain is also known as marustali that is great indian desert and the western part is covered by darni right you should remember this this is known as the marustali and this western part of the tar desert is covered by darni and uh, eastern part of tar desert up to upper uh, aravalli is semi arid means not completely desert okay and it is called as rajasthani bagar again important and the only river which flows in the tar desert is luni right luni river and flows through the run of kutch i hope yeah you can see here the luni river yeah this is a luni river which is then flowing to the run of kutch and uh, north of luni basin there are several rivers also that is sambar and kutchman these are the salt water lakes in the same tar desert and uh, this arid region the general arid zone of research of indian jodhpur has made up a latest technology in which there is a remote sensing to study and extend of the desert region of india so the desert region is extended to the global change and to study all this we are going to use this technology so in this punjab haryana plains it include uh, plains formed by the five tributaries these are the five tributaries it is known as also known as punjab plain and uh, the land of five rivers right see you can see it's formed by five rivers in this punjab haryana plains is formed by land of five rivers and what are those five rivers in this jhelum ravi bi sutlej and chenab and the punjab plain is known as land of five rivers made up of do halves do halves means land of land between two rivers right no and such network in which rivers are flowing through the land is known as chosh now ganga plain the most part of deltaic plains of bengal is now in bangladesh and the whole deltaic plain is composed of alluvium old and new alluvium this is important point alluvium is a type of soil and mud it's full of marshy areas and the north lies in ganga brahmaputra doha region and again in the north of this ganga plain it includes ganga brahmaputra doha region doha means land between two rivers next is brahmaputra plain brahmaputra plain extends from sayadri in the east to dubri in the west so this is brahmaputra plain which extends from sayadri in the east to the dubri in the west So length is six four zero zero, width is hundred kilometer less. This is made up of alluvium. So whenever the uh, plains which are formed by rivers are made up of alluvium. See here Brahmaputra river and the plain is formed here. So that is made up of alluvium. So this is rivers in the Ganga Brahmaputra uh, rivers. Uh, in, no no, there is a Ganga Yamuna, Gomti, Karak rivers. And again, this is made up of alluvium, right? so the river bodies wherever the river bodies are there beside that there is the soil form that soil is of alluvial soil and brahmaputra also brahmaputra plain is also made up of brahmaputra river so it is made up of alluvial soil and this indus ganga brahmaputra collectively indus ganga indus ganga and brahmaputra is home to several million peoples and in agriculture perspective of you this is the most fertile soil and the most fertile crops are grown here so the next is peninsula plateau peninsula plateau is also known as uh, indian plateau and it lies in the south part of the india and peninsula means what peninsula means track of uh, track of land bounded by three side water so 
the yellow color which is given is peninsula plateau it is enclosed by three side water what are this so one side bay, um, arabian sea indian ocean and bay of Bengal. so that part is known as peninsula plateau earlier we used to call this plateau as goodwin's land and this land peninsula plateau is made up of igneous and metamorphic rocks and to the side Peninsula Plateau is in the south of the river Vindhya and Satpura, Vindhya and Satpura, and most probably in the Aravallis. So, from Aravallis, what are the plateaus will come downwards is known as the Peninsula Plateau. So, Peninsula Plateau is further divided into four parts Indian Plateau, Deccan Plateau, Western Ghats, Eastern Ghats. Indian Plateau begins from Aravalli and begins from northwest of Aravalli and Aravallis forms the oldest mountain range. What are the oldest mountain range? Aravallis. Now, uh, this in Indian Plateau includes three plateau. The first is Indian Plateau itself. Second is Malwa Plateau. You can see here, this is the Malwa Plateau and Chotanagpur Plateau. So, these three parts. So, Chotanagpur Plateau is highly loaded with valuable minerals. So, you can just read out it. That's all. So, Deccan Plateau. Deccan Plateau is south of India and Satpura. We India and Satpura mountains are here. To the south of it, we have Deccan Plateau. And or else we can also call it as south of River Narmada. Or betterly, we will call it as south of India and Satpura. Right. Now, it is made up of lava which flows 100 meter thick. Right. So, you know, Deccan Plateau is made up of lava itself. And the Deccan Plateau has some mountain ranges such as Rajmal mountain ranges. And these mountain ranges. So the Deccan Plateau is triangulated in shape as I showed, and it is made up of bounded by Western Ghats, Eastern Ghats. Deccan Plateau is triangulated in shape, bounded by Western Ghats and Eastern Ghats. Western Ghats. Western Ghats is towards the west, and it's from it is from 1200 to 2400. Northern half of Western Ghats is known as Sayadri. Northern half of Western Ghats is known as Sayadri. And Western Ghats are Sayadri Hills and Nilgiri Hills. So, northern north is Sayadri and here is Nilgiri Hills. And Nilgiri Hills is also known as Blue Mountains. The south of Nilgiri Hills are Anamalai, Kadamum and Panahi Hills. Anamudi 2605 is in Anamalai Hills and it's the highest peak in Peninsula. That is South India, highest peak is Anamudi. And Deccan Plateau is like this. If it is a Deccan Plateau, it is bent like this. As is the water, the river will be going, will drain only into the Bay of Bengal, not into the Arabian Sea because it is not straight. It is bent like this. Okay. Eastern Ghats. Eastern Ghats stretch from Mahanadi to Nilgiri. Mahanadi to Nilgiri is this Eastern Ghats. And... Uh, it's wider and vital coast. It, it, it also provides the coast. It is not continuous. It's a breakage. And it disappears about 150 km from Krishna and Kavi Godavari. It disappears. And we're going to discuss that is that coastal plains, highlands in the next part of the video. And if you want the next part of the video, comment down below.